Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the importance of collaborating with local communities. Uh, my name is Fernando Fernandez Mancera. I work at uh, Red Hat. And I, first, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about me. So, I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. I work in networking services team. And during my uh, long journey, well, short journey in computer science, I have collaborated with a lot of uh, different communities. Um, my first step was with uh, uh, Sulus. It was a uh, it is a uh, uh, Linux user group. Uh, then I started collaborating with Tor Project, uh, Netfilter, Netfilter, now Network Manager, uh, well, Fedora Community. And then this is why uh, I think that it's really important to have uh, local communities and do work with them. So yeah, let's uh, get on the topic. So first of all, uh, what is a local community? Well, uh, a community is a group of people that uh, share some common interest or or likes. Um, uh, this this is the definition of a community. Basically, what makes it local is that they live close uh, to each other. Uh, it could be national or regional. Uh, both of them are considered local because nowadays most of the communities are uh, global communities. And it is important that a community organize activity to address uh, bonds and, and meet the objective of common interest. That's really important because people need to know each other, people need to know what others like and what others feel and then work together in, in a common topic. So here there are some logos of uh, what I consider some examples of local communities. There is Sugu uh, from Seville, XNET from Spain, uh, mainly uh, Barcelona. Then we have the Computer Cast Club from uh, Germany and uh, the Festa dos Direitos Digitais uh, from uh, Portugal. And they are all uh, really good examples of uh, local communities. Okay, so um, the question here is why are they important and why we should uh, focus on them more? It's uh, the first of all, it's because uh, the local activist actions are more effective if they are performed or they are done by uh, local people. And this is something quite common because if someone from Germany uh, goes to a, a Spanish, pal uh, a, a Spanish uh, parliament member, uh, probably they won't treat them equal as if they uh, it was an Spaniard uh, reaching them out. Why? Because we both in our local uh, communities, in our local governments, we vote and we matter to them. So when you do activism, it's uh, really important that you reach out people that are going to consider your ideas or your opinion. So if you go and you're trying to do some activism, uh, I first of all recommend you to try local activism because probably it's going to be more effective. So this is the first point of why local communities are really important. The second one is that because people feel closer by doing activities face to face. It is true that nowadays with uh, Google Chat, uh, Google Meets, uh, Zoom, and any uh, um, other applications, uh, we can all meet uh, uh, using webcams and we can know each other's faces. But uh, in the end, we like to do uh, face to face activities. They they can be activities related with. Uh, uh, with the organization um, interest, or they can be any other thing. But the point is that at the end of the day, you know more each other and you feel uh, more close to people that you're working uh, with. That's that's an important step. And then the second one, that they, the third one, sorry, is that they extend the efforts of global communities. For example, here in Fedora, uh, it's a great example. So if you have this, uh, obviously global community that involve people, involve people from around the world. And it is really good when you organize a local event uh, related to Fedora because you know each other and, and you know that maybe your neighbor is using uh, Fedora too and you didn't know. So that's a uh, really, really good thing. So I think, I think Fedora did a really good job with the Fedora Hatch because they promoted local events. And I noticed that they could, uh, they, they, they get really, really good attention. 
Yeah. Uh, so, well, uh, you are, maybe you are wondering how could you collaborate uh, more with your local communities? Uh, because probably you don't know that even there is a local community uh, with some interest that you are, you also have. And um, for that, there are several roles that probably uh, you can help with. So the first one is seeking financial support or kind of activity in the end need financial support. And this is really something really important because if you need to travel to another city or you need to buy some uh, food for the event or you need to uh, hire a bus to move to somewhere, you will need money. Uh, then organizing activities for the community. Probably there is not, it, it doesn't matter which, which uh, community uh, you focus on, but probably there is not enough people organizing activities. That is something uh, quite common. Sometimes there is people participating in the activity, but not enough people organizing them. Then spread the word. Uh, if you do something, you need to talk about it. And that is a key point, because if you don't tell about it, uh, people will know that you are doing this, and probably you are missing people, and you are missing uh, your target. Then we have uh, too much. You, you, I think this is not a need, but probably it's something that you should do, and it's maintain the relationship with other community, communities with similar interests. It is quite common, for example, that in the same city, uh, I'm going to talk about free software because uh, it's it's a topic that I work on, but there are multiple topics. So it is very uh, common that in the same city, there are two or three organizations working, uh, promoting free software or contributing to free software. That is common. And probably it will be better if you uh, create only one and, and all the people it's collaborating to the same organization. But that is not going to happen because uh, it's, it's a little bit uh, chaotic how an organization is created. So, well, I think um, it's better to just maintain relationships uh, between the communities. So if you know, for example, you're working free software and you know another organization that is also working on free software, probably you have common interest and you should work together uh, to get them done. Okay, so let's focus a little bit more on each, um, on, on each item. So the first one, uh, seeking financial support. Uh, thank you, uh, Marie, for uh, sharing this, this um, link. Yes, it is really, really needed, and, and uh, it is sometimes it's easy for a really big organization, but it's really hard for a local organization or a local community to get this financial support. I recommend you to check institutional or government uh, government grants uh, from universities, for your town hall, from I don't know your parliament. There are multiple options. Sometimes there are uh, grants for uh, local communities, and you can uh, take advantage of them. Uh, then you have you need financial support from uh, global organizations. So this is a perfect example of what I told before about Fedora and Fedora Hatch. So if there is a, a global organization with more power and um, more uh, um, more money you can ask for financial support if you share interest. Um, maybe they can help you. Uh, so if you are, in this case, if you are, if you are uh, working on Fedora or working on a free software and you need uh, some financial support to, to prepare meetings or to prepare uh, anything, uh, please use the link the uh, Marie shared. And then you have, um, you can ask for a sponsorship from companies with similar interest. For example, if you are organizing a free software event or a free software activity, you could ask, for example, Red Hat or similar companies that uh, promote uh, free software. It is really hard and requires some abilities to do this, but I think it's it's something really important to know. And I think it's something very, valu very valuable because you can get a lot of yeah, you can do much more if you have money on your side. So, yeah, uh, of course, money is important, but more important is people and people organizing things. So 
it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you have uh 10 people 20 50 or 100 uh people trying to uh, participate in your activities but no one is organizing them so if you are able to do it try to organize activities uh, for the community that means you can organize workshops learning talks city tours hiking uh, room table, uh, round tables, debates, whatever thing that you, you think it's, it's good for, for the community. And I must say that sometimes these activities, they, they do not need to be uh, related or strictly related with the topic that you're working on, because you can do a city tour or, or a hiking session and yes, to strengthen bond between the members of the community. And that is also important because in the future, when they need to work on something hard to achieve what the community is trying to achieve, that bonds are going to pay off and are going to be really important to uh, to, to get what, what the community wants to, to get. Yeah, and um, please, if you are able to organize things, uh, probably the community that, that uh, in which you are part of or the community that you're part of, it's going to be really happy that you're trying to organize something. Uh, then spread the word. As I said, if you are doing something, you need to tell the word about it, because if not, no one will notice. And probably you're achieving great things, but if you don't say, hey, we did this, they won't notice. So social network activities, your friend here, you can do it by tweeting, posting, maybe creating a podcast, uh, YouTube videos, Whatever social network you, you do, Mastodon, uh, whatever thing. Then you can create flyers with information about the community and distribute them in universities, in places, basically in places where you think that your target of people is and, and try to uh, reach them out. And of course, of course, uh, posters and swag. Why posters and swag? Because swag uh, is something the important uh, when you when you are wearing a t-shirt, uh, we are wearing a t-shirt with a logo or a slogan from a company or sorry from a community or from a, or from an organization. Mm, it could be possible that someone say, "Hey, what is this about?" And then you can tell them, or maybe they say, "Oh, I saw this before," and they ask you, or oh, something similar, and let. Be honest. It's uh, nowadays most of the clothes uh, have logos of companies and things on the clothes. So why not to wear something that you are proud of uh, to be working on? Right. So then we have the last point, which is maintaining relationships with other communities. So basically, the idea is to organize events together and share resources and opportunities. So if you heard about an opportunity, because let's say a global, commu a global community is providing you uh, or giving you information about an event, you can reach out this other community that has the same interest than yours and say, okay, let's work together on this. Let's uh, do a talk together. Let's do a workshop or whatever other thing. Or, oh, um, let's say that you have resources and you have enough resources for you, community, and maybe another community. OK, invite them. And you can provide them some financial uh, support that probably they need. And then uh, unifying efforts in, activis in activism is really, really important. Because right, if you go to a um, parliament member with uh, three or four people saying, oh, we want to do this. And, and we have a community of 30 people uh, behind us. OK, that's good. But if you go out and you say, OK, we are a group of five communities, and uh, we, we have uh, 150 people behind us, that really, really makes a difference. And, and it's, it's important to, to coordinate efforts and do not wait efforts doing the same work in a separate way. Yeah, so basically this is all. I just wanted to to reach out. Uh, uh, to, I just wanted to to well spread more about your local communities. Um, 
we can uh, if if you if you don't think that there is some community uh, near to you, uh, feel free to reach me out, and we can try to find some community um, that could share some interest with you. Or uh, maybe it's time to create your own community and start the 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 whole process uh, by yourself. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for all your attention. I know that it was a little bit fast, but uh, I would like to hear some questions or comments. Uh, thank you, Mali, for uh, sharing all the links from Fedora. Uh, Fedora is doing an amazing support here, uh, supporting local communities. Um, yeah, I recommend you to engage with uh, Fedora Mindshare Committee if you want to work more uh, with your local communities, and they are related to Fedora. So, any question? Yes. Oh, what can Fedora do to help the local community you're involved in? Uh, thank you. So, let's say, uh, I think already uh, Fedora really have a really good plan for local communities. Uh, for example, you are providing, uh, you're offering Slack, you are uh, offering financial support for events related to Fedora. Um, you are offering uh, uh, coordinated events like the Fedora Hatch or the, or for example, the uh, Fedora release parties, things like that. Uh, so I, I think Fedora is doing quite great. If we can say something, probably. Uh, it would be nice if Fedora could provide more support, financial support to students. Let's say, for example, there is an event. So if Fedora has enough budget, uh, they could uh, provide financial support to, to, the, to these students to go to the event, basically travel and an hotel or whatever place they, they, will, they, they are going to stay. Something like that, I think, could be um, quite good. But of course, budget is limited, and this is, this is something that we all know. But if if they have you know budget, of course, um, that is something um, possible. Uh, oh, one more question. Apologies if you're going to talk. Okay, how will you someone start a local community if one doesn't exist already? Good question. Um, this depends a little bit on your region or your country uh, because there are different official process for that. So the first thing that you should do is look in the internet. Look in the internet and find out if there are already an existing one. If doesn't, I recommend you to find out people that could be uh, that could have the, the same interest. For example, uh, free software or uh, digital rights, or even I don't know. Uh, sometimes there are local communities that work on making a better neighborhood. So something like that could, could also be a local community. So the first thing is to try to find out people with uh, that that people that shares um, that share interests, like um, um, in universities, uh, other communities. Maybe they are not strictly related with your interest, but they are related. Uh, your group of friends, uh, family, uh, whatever, people in general. You can try to uh, post something on the internet saying, hey, uh, I'm from here and you want to start a community uh, or I have interest on this. Anyone else? And that could, that could work. Then you need to write down what is the community trying to to achieve, uh, to improve something, to promote something, or whatever, and then create uh, the organization. So there are some there must be some responsibilities. Um, people need to get them uh, to, to volunteer to cover them, uh, create social network, create the whole uh, infrastructure needed. Uh, not sure if. Depending on the community, you may you might need a uh, uh, physical space, but th this is more specific to, to the organization. But basically, create an official infrastructure and try to uh, share responsibilities with uh, different uh, volunteers. And then start the work. Uh, start doing what you think should be uh, 
doing the work to, to achieve what the community tries to, to achieve. Yes, you need to delegate. That is really important. Uh, maybe you want to do things, but you cannot do them all. And so you need people that could help you to do that. I do not think that uh, I do not think that someone needs to be the head of the organization. Maybe it can be more uh, horizontal, but the idea is that um, you cannot do anything. You, you cannot do everything. So you need to share the uh, different responsibilities with other people, and you need to trust them. So you need to giving them. Uh, you, you need to to trust uh, on them and say, okay, this is going to be done because this person is in charge and it's working on it, and I trust this person. And well, it's it's a process that it is not <laughs> it's not easy at all, and sometimes the creation of a, a community or an organization is quite quite chaotic. Sometimes there are a group of friends sharing some interest and they decide to uh, make it more efficient with an uh, organization or a community. And sometimes it's people that they do not know each other. So it's it's uh, different. All right, so that seems to be all. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. And thank you for your attention.